This is Lauren from Cheshire Public Library, and this is Pizza Making Part 2. In Part 1, I showed you how to make your own dough from scratch. I recommend starting there if you haven't watched that video already. If you're good to go and you have your dough already, let's go on and make some pizza. For a plain cheese pizza, you will need tomato sauce, mozzarella cheese, and some cornmeal or flour. Also get out a cookie sheet to use for baking the pizza. Feel free to grab some toppings too. Preheat your oven. Set it to at least 450 degrees Fahrenheit, but go higher if you can. Pizza needs a hot oven, and brick ovens used to make New Haven style pizza can reach up to 800 degrees. I could make one big pizza from this, but I want two medium pizzas, so I'm going to divide the dough in half and put one half back into the bowl for later. However you do it, this amount of dough will feed about four people. Sprinkle some cornmeal or flour on your cookie sheet so the dough doesn't stick. Now stretch out your dough. Use your hands to gently stretch it, or let gravity do some of the work for you, as I'm doing. Once it's a little spread out, put it on the pan, and use your fingers to push the dough out. The dough has become really stretchy, and that's because it now contains long strands of gluten. Gluten is a protein in flour that forms elastic bonds to each other, and it's what gives chewiness and structure to breads, bagels, and pizza dough. We helped the gluten develop when we stretched out the dough and kneaded it, and then when we let it rest. The extra protein from the bread flour and the liquid whey help the gluten to develop even more. If you use all-purpose flour or whole wheat flour, and if you used water, your dough might not be quite as stretchy because there wasn't as much gluten to develop, but it will still be delicious. Next, add a layer of sauce and smooth it evenly over your dough. Time for the cheese. Mozzarella is the traditional choice. Cheese made with whole milk melts better than cheese made from 2% or skim milk, but use whatever you have. I'm also going to add some homemade ricotta, just for fun. When you're happy with your toppings, pop it in the oven. The cooking time depends on the temperature of your oven, but start checking for deadness after 5 minutes. You want your cheese to be melted and your crust to start getting brown. When it looks done, take it out. That's a nice looking pizza. If your pizza is ready, start cutting, but do a better job than me. Also, make sure that your crust is fully cooked. My cheese was perfectly browned, but the crust was slightly underdone and I didn't realize it until after I bit into this lovely looking slice. So I put it back in the oven for a minute or two. Now we've got it. My second pizza was very fancy, with Italian sausage, caramelized onions, and arugula. Let's take a look at a cross-section of dough. Can you see all the little holes in the crust? Those were formed by carbon dioxide bubbles that the yeast produced through fermentation, and they were trapped by the long strands of gluten in the dough. It's crunchy on the outside from the high temperature, and it's fluffy and soft on the inside. Pizza perfection. That was some seriously tasty pizza. Pizza is a blank slate for creativity. Uh, maybe a blank crust? Anyway, you can experiment with different toppings, sauces, and cheeses. The combinations are endless. You can find more great cooking ideas at CheshireLibrary.org or by following us on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. Stay safe and thanks for watching.